Hello everyone, it's Payonard here with my 1K Subs Q&A special. Before I start, I just want to give a huge thank you to all of my subscribers who have helped me to reach this milestone. I couldn't have done it without you. And thank you also for the really good and interesting questions. I'm, I'm really glad to answer some of these questions, so... Just right off the bat, I'm just going to start top to bottom here. Um, Godzilla Cana Monsters asks, What do I plan to do in the future? School, career, YouTube? <sighs> um, for school, I'm currently attending college. My current major is geology, and I'm also planning to focus a lot on biology because I... In terms of career, I'm hoping to become a paleontologist. That's that's my goal. Um, YouTube, just keep making videos for you guys. So, I think that should answer your question. I know I kind of answered all of them, but... There. Alright, yeah. So, and Paleomedia asks... Have I ever played or heard about the Isle, Path of Titans, Saurians, Beast of Bermuda, other dinosaur survival games? Schooling the best one. And what do I think of them? Um, I have heard of all of those games. Uh, I've not, I haven't played any of them. Uh, what do I think of them? They look alright. Um, I like that a lot of them are focusing on making the dinosaurs look accurate. Although, like, obviously, new discoveries can kind of make it difficult to make the designs look up to date. Especially for Spinosaurus. <laughs> um, and I, I haven't played, again, I haven't played any of these, so I'm not entirely sure, but, like, I've seen a lot of, I've been hearing a lot about different types of these, yeah, dinosaur survival games. And, again, I can't really tell this for certain, but I am hoping that there is a bit of variety between these games in terms of gameplay. Because, like... Yeah, I hope I hope these games have different enough gameplay so that they're all somewhat unique and not just copying each other, which I doubt they are. It's just hope keeping that in mind for future games in this somewhat specific genre, this dinosaur survival simulator type stuff. That's a really specific genre that a lot of developers seem to be heading towards nowadays. Even Maneater is kind of like that, but you're a shark. So it's kind of interesting. So I'm kind of interested in seeing how that's, what direction that's going to go. Um, next, Super Mario Logan fan. What are my th three favorite dinosaurs in Jurassic World Evolution? Okay, right off the bat, just for future reference, I absolutely suck at listing my favorites. I, like, really for anything, not just dinosaurs, it's just, I rarely have specific favorites. I'm going to try and answer these questions. Don't, don't get me wrong there, I'm still going to answer this question. And, to be fair, my three favorite dinosaurs in that game, like, that's a bit of a broad statement. Um, so, like, I'm assuming you mean, like, design, like, what my favorite design is, or <sighs> my three favorite dinosaurs. Just for this, just for this sake, I'm going to go with or the original dinosaur design, so none of the dinosaurs that were actually in the movies, the more original dinosaur designs... 
My three favorites in no particular order are probably Giganotosaurus, Sukamimus, and Majungasaurus. Actually, no. Yep, scratch that. Sintelsaurus would probably replace Giganotosaurus. So it's in no particular order, my three favorite dinosaur designs, original dinosaur designs in Jurassic World Evolution are Sintelsaurus, Suchomimus, and Majungasaurus. Uh, William Park, have you ever heard of an anime called Pikaia? Pi Pikaia. Um, no, I, I, I haven't. Um, I'm not a big anime person. Like, the only anime I've watched is One Punch Man on Netflix. If you know anything about that, it is absolutely batshit crazy. <laughs> like, obviously, it's kind of meant to be a parody of other anime. I get that, but it, it really gets insane. Like, I, I enjoyed one, I kind of enjoyed One Punch Man, so, I mean, but that's really all I know about anime. Uh, I'm assuming that, yeah, this is, anime is about the animal, Pikaia, Pikaia, however you pronounce that, from the Cambrian. It's believed to be one of the earliest chordates that's, it's believed to be one of the oldest chordates which are basically animals with a spinal cord. So, supposedly one of our ancestors. Um, and then, this guy has some ideas for my scientific analysis series, and of course, they're all, they're all the popular ones. Planet, Dinosaur, Dinosaur Revolution, Walking with Beasts, Walking with Monsters, Prehistoric Park, Walking with Dinosaurs. Yeah, I plan on reviewing all of these, so really no need to ask. I already have plans for them. I have plans for pretty much every major dinosaur documentary, so you don't need to worry about that. I am kind of sad that you felt the need to clarify which Walking with Dinosaurs you were talking about. Now that, the, now that that awful movie is out. I plan to cover the movie, by the way, too, just just so you know. But yeah, this this the yeah the nineteen the ninety nine version that's is and always will be though true walking with dinosaurs to me. Nothing else tops it. Um, Capitan Dino. His question is. How did you start your channel, and where did the idea come from? Alright, um, it's a bit of a story time. So, I started this channel, what, like, almost two years ago at this point? And, well, okay, so I've had this account for much longer than that, but, like, I had, like, the channel up, but I didn't really have any videos up. I didn't really have any ideas of what to do with it, so I really just used it to subscribe to other channels and so I could see when they were uploading new videos. And then, about two years ago, before I started this Paleo Nerd stuff, um... I was heading to, I was at high school pre-band camp, so there was band camp, and then there was pre-band camp, the week before band camp, where we'd spend several hours at the high school practicing our stuff before actual band camp, and by this point, I had been in band camp, I had been in band since middle school, I've been here for a while, and I was starting to get bored with it. And, you know, when I get bored, I'm, yeah. 
So, and like, you know how, like, sometimes your best ideas come when you're doing boring or mundane tasks, like when you're in the shower. So, like, when I'm at pre-band camp and I'm just so bored, I'm not entirely sure what happened. It's just this light bulb went off in my head or something, and I'm just like, hey, I have a YouTube channel. I could use that to teach people about dinosaurs. And that just, that just popped up into my head. I decided to run with that. And, like, I, yeah, pretty much the three main ideas were, yeah, the scientific analysis, the natural history series, and the creature profiles. Those were all the ideas I had from the start. And... It's worked out for me pretty well since, so it is an amazing question. What do you think of Miragaya Longicolum and the fact since 2019 it is now considered that it also lived in North America as well as Portugal? Um, yeah, Miragaya is pretty cool. I think it's a pretty interesting animal. Like, I mean, like, Basic, it is basically what a uh, Portuguese eagle calls it. It's a, it's a stegosaur trying to be a sauropod because it's got a really long neck. And, yeah, and I should probably clarify this part. Um, This species, Miragaya longicolum, is not known from North America. What happened was... In 2019, I believe, so last year, there was a paper released where basically the authors had been studying this near-complete skeleton of Amiragaya. So it, there was a lot of insights into its anatomy and, in part, its phylogeny, how it was related to other stegosaurs. And in that paper, it was proposed that another stegosaur from the Morrison Formation, called Alcovasaurus, was actually a North American species of Miragaya. They dubbed it Miragaya longispinus, because originally it was Alcovasaurus longispinus, and they changed it to Miragaya, Miragaya longispinus. Um, and, like, that's a lump that would probably be considered more objective, but Honestly, I am 100% behind Miragaya longispinus, North American Miragaya. Is this, like, I don't know, it just kind of sounds, just sound, kind of sounds right to me. Because, like, you know, Lorena and Morrison already share quite a few genera, like Allosaurus and Torvosaurus. Why not have Miragaya? in both formations as well. Um, Halgex Giganotosaurus. Do you think Spinosaurids could have had full body coverings? Um, um, I'm not really sure. I mean, we haven't really had any skin impressions or feather preservations from Megalosaurs. So, I don't, I, I'm not, I'm kind of leaning towards Spinosaurs not having feathers. I mean, like, if they did, it probably wouldn't be a lot. It probably wouldn't cover the whole body either. But, you know, I mean, I'd mean, be fine with feathers. I mean, like, penguin-like feathers might work, because then, like, that could help reduce drag and water. It, there's room to speculate. Uh, pizza here. What is your favorite species of large sauropod? Um, and then explain prehistory. Ask, what is your favorite dinosaur prehistoric animal in general? Um, my favorite species of large sauropod. God, there are so many. Um, 
I guess Argentinosaurus. Why not? Uh, it's pretty big. In fact, it's uh, it's probably still the biggest. It's at least one of the biggest. It, um, uh, yeah. Um, favorite dinosaur, and then okay. Yeah, I'm starting to notice a theme here with favorite prehistoric animals. What is my favorite dinosaur or prehistoric animal? What are my top three? Um, I'm just going to kind of answer both of these questions, just give you, give, give you my top three. Again, not really in any particular order, but, uh... Let's say Spinosaurus is definitely up there. It's very high. So Spinosaurus, Tyrannosaurus, and probably uh, Allosaurus, I guess. Yeah, we'll go with Allosaurus. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. They're all, sor they're all theropods. Um... My favorite overall, um, probably either Spinosaurus or a Tyrannosaurus, either one of those works. Um, Ariel Nunez, what is my favorite fighting game? Yeah, so, um, get it? Yeah, I don't do well with favorites. I know I've said this numerous times already. I'm sorry, but I just do not. I just, I don't really have us. I don't really have favorites. But if I had to pick one, well, well, first it definitely be Mortal Kombat. It it definitely be one of those games because yeah, those that's my favorite fighting game franchise. Out of those, uh, in terms of gameplay, I'd probably go with the most recent one, Mortal Kombat 11. Like, I mean, the story for that kind of sucks. And I won't get too much into it because this isn't a Mortal Kombat channel. But in terms of gameplay, probably Mortal Kombat 11. Um, Dino Boy, what do I think about lips in theropods? Um, I mean, some of them probably did, some of them probably didn't. I mean, like, Spinosaurs are probably the only theropods I could see not having lips. Like, I... It's a rather controversial topic, but I'm pretty much... Going with most of them probably did. Yeah, there might have been some that didn't, but most of them probably did. Um, TP two hundred. Do I know about? Did I know about Godzilla? Uh, if you're talking about the giant monster, which I'm a hundred percent sure you are, then yeah, I have. I've been a fan of Godzilla for almost as long as I've been a fan of dinosaurs. Um, although, I mean, I, yeah, I don't, I'm not entirely sure what, I don't think you're referring to anything else. Like, I know there was a Metrio Rinkid, a Dacosaurus specimen that was nicknamed Godzilla, but I doubt that's what you're talking about. So, yeah, I have, I do know about Godzilla. I'm, I'm somewhat of a big fan of Godzilla. Not as big as dinosaurs and paleontology, but it's up there. And then, so that was for the original post. And then the other one, I said I would be recording soon. Oh, there's another one that... Um, alright. There's another question, so, alright. Peter, Peter, I'm assuming, uh, I might butcher some of your names, I'm sorry if that happens. Peter Milich asked, since I debunked 
Megalodon's survival into modern day, what do I think of other supposed cases of Lazarus Taxa? Okay, if you don't know what a Lazarus Taxa, it's basically uh, a taxon that is thought to have been extinct, but is later seen, but is later found to still be alive. So like, coelacanths or Lazarus Taxa, but like, coelacanths are a bit of an outlier when it comes to Lazarus Taxa, because they're fish, they're and they don't fossilize very well, so there are a lot of gaps in the fossil record for coelacanths. And the coelacanth species, the genus that we have today, is not the same as the ones that lived in the Mesozoic, which is why the coelacanth is a very poor justification for all those late surviving Mesozoic animal cryptids. Again, there are other examples of Lazarus taxon, like the bush dog in South America. There are two species, one that's extinct and one that's still alive. We actually dis The extinct species was actually discovered first. The fossils of the extinct species were discovered first. Then they found the extant species la later and figured out that they were in the same genus, so... Yeah, technically the bush dog is a Lazarus taxon. Um, I mean, those one, like, yeah, Lazarus taxon, Lazarus taxa as a concept is pretty cool. I like that idea, but I feel like cryptozoology has used it way too much to try and justify a bunch of cryptids that don't actually exist. Um. And the one that just showed up, what upcoming paleo, paleo medias are you anticipated about? Um, I mean, I'm not really too aware of a lot of upcoming paleo media, so, um, I don't know. Any new documentaries that come out, as long as those are good, I'll probably watch them. Um, and like obviously there's Jurassic World Dominion, which yeah I've kind of I've kind of lost my faith in the Jurassic World franchise after Fallen Kingdom. And like it just looks like that franchise is gonna go downhill. So there's not really a whole lot I'm specifically looking forward to. Uh, Dino Tails. What is my favorite underrated dinosaur and why? Underrated dinosaur? Um, I mean, Miragaya from earlier is a pretty interesting dinosaur. Um, underrated. Probably Ceratosaurus. <laughs> you know, it's like it's all, it's always playing second fiddle to other Morrison theropods, mainly Allosaurus. They're like, yeah, give poor Ceratosaurus a, a spotlight. Like, I mean, like when dinosaurs roamed America, the Ceratosaurus was basically one of the main one of the main protagonists of that segment, and then, like, it got killed by the Allosaurus. And then, of course, Jurassic Fight Club had two separate episodes of Allosaurus killing a Ceratosaurus, so... Yeah. Um... My least favorite dinosaur documentary... If it is if it is Jurassic Fight Club, then tell me your second least favorite. Yeah, my least favorite is probably Jurassic Fight Club. Well, actually, no. I think... Yeah, no. Actually, Jurassic Fight Club is not my least favorite dinosaur documentary. The Honor goes to Valley of the T-Rex. If you're unfamiliar with that, 
it's pretty much just a propaganda film supporting Jack Horner's stupid T-Rex is, is a scavenger theory. And like, it is so incredibly biased. He, Jack Horner is the only paleontologist in that documentary. So you don't get to see any alternate viewpoints. He's just selling you on his idea with the most of the evidence being just like, ha, huh, it's slow, ha, huh, it can't see well, which is a misconception. Tyrannosaurus had exceptional eyesight, and it also didn't need to be fast because it's the dinosaurs it was hunting weren't that fast to begin with. And like, he, he, like, Jack Horner does just shows a lot of misunderstanding on ecology, assuming that hyenas are scavengers when they actually hunt more than lions do, and thinking that all scavengers are ugly and stuff like that. That's so yeah, Valley of the T Rex is my least favorite dinosaur documentary. In my opinion, it's worse than Jurassic Fight Club because <laughs> To this day, it seems to convince people in this stupid theory. <laughs> so, that's why. Um, and then, final one for here. Um, will I review more dinosaur documentaries in the future? Yes. Like, <laughs> yeah, I do plan to, I, I plan to, re again, I plan to review pretty much every dinosaur documentary you've ever heard of. And probably a few that you haven't heard of. Because I'm going to, I'm going to get them all. Um, all right, looks like we have a bit of time left. So I'm going to go and look at the comments on some of my videos. Some of the ones that I, some of the questions I'm posted on some of my videos and that I haven't answered yet and kind of answer those as well is also just to see if anyone else posts any questions and, and anyone else posts any questions on my other posts and it's just like yeah um, so on my Natural History of Tyrannosauridae video, he talks about how Sinotyrannus is considered a pro now, how much concrete evidence is present to support that theory. Um, so yeah, like, when it was first described, Sinotyrannus was actually thought to be the earliest known Tyrannosaurid because of how big it was. But, like, when they compared it to other Tyrannosauroids, it was found to be far more basal and was found to be closer to Proceratosaurids. I'm not entirely sure what evidence there was, but it does have a lot of features of more basal Tyrannosaurids. And I believe it actually does preserve part of a uh, head crest, which pretty much puts it in Proceratosauridae because those were the Tyrannosaurs that had crests. Um, uh, you should do a series on Dino Hunters. Um, I mean. I mean, like, yeah. I've been, I've actually been asked to review Dino Hunters on my Discord, and I will just say this. In order to review Dino Hunters, I would have to actually view it. I'd have to watch it. And that is something that I have vowed to never do under any circumstance ever since it was announced. I, I, I can't do that. 
I refuse. <sighs> okay, it looks like got another comment, another question. Uh, what is my favorite dinosaur video game, favorite paleo documentary, and favorite movie? Um, favorite video game, probably Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, my favorite dinosaur video game, probably J J Pog. that's my favorite. Like, like, I mean, Jurassic World Evolution comes close, but J Pog is probably better, in my opinion. Favorite paleo documentary, Walking with Dinosaurs. Again, nothing else really comes close. And movie. Uh, my favorite paleo movie is the original Jurassic Park. Again, nothing else really comes close. Uh, oh yeah, here here's one. Here's a pretty interesting question for the uh, I got on the second natural history update. Is there any evidence of some sort of land bridge between Asia and North America during the Cretaceous? Because it seems like a lot of North American animals have more in common with Asian species rather than American species. So how would it have been possible for animals to cross over from Asia? So, yeah. There was, there, there is plenty of evidence of a land bridge between Asia and North America. And one of those evidence is actually something that you point out, that North American animals have more in common, have a lot in common with Asian animals. That's already pretty concrete evidence of some sort of land bridge, of some sort of faunal interchange. And... So, and like, I mean, like, it's not the only time that's happened either, the Cretaceous. Like, it's happened several times during the Cenozoic as well, during the Oligocene, Miocene, and again in the Pleistocene. So, yeah, Asia and North America have been connected several times as sea levels have rise has seen levels have gone up and down and allows animals to cross over and like for Cretaceous specifically yeah basically the evidence is similar animals like T-Rex and Tarbosaurus are most closely related to each other you have the Velociraptorines, which are mostly known from Asia, being found in North America, like with Acroraptor and Deneo Bellator. And like, even down to specific genera, we have, like, we have Sorolophus, a hadrosaur from the late Cretaceous, where the type species was found in Canada, Sorolophus osborni, and then you had Sorolophus angustirostris in Mongolia at around the same time. So you had two species within the same genus on two separate continents. Indicates that there probably was some connection there. Um... And then, yeah, that se that seems to be it for the questions. Uh, yeah, yeah, it looks like it's all so. Uh, if there are any more questions, post it on 
like one of these community posts I'll just reply to it I, I will still answer those questions but in the meantime I have another video to work on hint hint that I will likely also be recording soon and now that I have this community tab available thanks to the 1k subs you might even be able to see the thumbnail for that video soon so be on the lookout for that now that's all done over with thank you again thank you thank all of you so much for subscribing to this channel and helping me reach this milestone because again I literally could not have done this without any of you guys and you know just keep up the good work I'll probably make the next milestone I think will probably be 5k I think that's a reasonable milestone to get to and like if you guys have other ideas for a video of other um, subscriber specials I should do besides just Q&A, be sure to let me know if, if you guys have any idea of like some sort of live stream or something. I'm open. I'm open to ideas. So that's all for today. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and... This is PaleoNerd signing out.